If you're looking for book reviews, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and while you're there, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload again. Hey guys, I just finished 112263 by Stephen King. Um, yes, this is a big, long book. It tops off at 849 pages. If you're not familiar with the date, um, that is the name of the book. That is the day that JFK was assassinated. Now, um, I really enjoyed this book, although it did take me longer than I had planned to get through it. But it was very, very enjoyable from beginning to end. Um, one of the things I have to mention about this book is that there were some really emotional... I mean, Stephen King has a way of tugging at your emotions. Now, this book had it had the feels. And the first half of the book had a lot of feels. But we're going to get into that. Let's get into... The main character is named Jake Epping. And he lives... It's 2011 and his present day... And we're introduced to him, and he kind of lives a kind of mediocre, mundane life as a high school English teacher. Um, he also teaches a GED class in the evenings, where we come upon another character named Harry Dunning that's mentioned. And Harry Dunning has a tragic past. See, that's another thing. There are the feels, and then there's, like, tragedies, too. I mean, after all, the name of the book was a tragedy to begin with. But, you know, Jake has a friend named Al Templeton who owns a diner, and he's he's got this secret, and he wants to reveal to Jake before, you know, he passes away he wants Jake to know about this secret now I've seen this book listed on horror lists and if you're assuming that just because it's Stephen King it's going to be a horror book it's not um I've noticed because I've read a lot of different Stephen King books Stephen King tends to be a multi-genre writer um he writes more than just horror and I would strongly suggest, because this book is about time travel and alternate histories, I'm going to suggest that this book is more of a science fiction read than a horror book. Unless you want to constitute the alternate reality <laughs> as horror, but that's really going, that's really picking at it, like that's a very small portion of the book. But like I mentioned, there were, like, if you could, if you, every man wants to make an impact on history, and if you had an opportunity to go back and change something in the past to either benefit and make someone someone's life better or the whole world better in general, would you do that? So Jake goes back in time to 1958 he all of a sudden, he changes his name, he has an alias, a George Amberson, and he goes back to Derry, which is where Harry Dunning is from, and along with the side story of Harry Dunning's tragic past and Jake's attempt to change it, we're also meeting characters from the novel It, where he meets Bev and Richie. And that was a nice little touch because it's kind of like in the know thing if you've read the prior Stephen King books. You're like, oh, I know who those characters are. And they kind of subtly mention the events of the book It because this takes place after the It book. I found that to be a nice little touch. Um, like I said, the feels. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this book because even though I feel like I'm one of the last few people to have read this... I know not everyone has read it, so I know I'm not the last person to have read this book. But yeah, I mean, it had a lot of these little, you know, different moments where it was like, you know, where he's compared to being a guardian angel by some people. 
And that, I will admit, the book did have slow start when you're being introduced to the main character, Jake, and his, that's why I said his existence is kind of mundane and kind of boring and ho-hum, because that's what it felt like to me when it, the book first starts. But it does quick, the pace does kind of quicken. Um, the I'm not going to, I hate to say nostalgia, but the way King talks about the, the late 50s and early 60s, I found very interesting, even though I was not alive during that time period. And I like how he kind of talks about the environment and how, like, you know, there was no EPA and the 50s really smelled bad and all that. I really found interesting. And I will admit, I did kind of, like, for reference, I did go and look up, like, Glenn Miller Band and listen to the In The Mood song to kind of get more of a feel for the book as I was reading it. Now, um, of course, if you have to be kind of somewhat familiar with the JFK assassination, you know, it was, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald was the suspected lone gunman. And, like, you know, there's I, there's a little bit of kind of spy, you know, like, scenario going on with that situation. And, I'm like I said, I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to spoil it for those of you who have not read it. But then there's also the side romance of George Amberson with a lady named Sadie who is a librarian, which I found very interesting, and that added a little nice little touch. I love when there's when authors add a little side story to like so it keeps the book lively and not boring and you also get a feel for the characters and it helps you make you know the characters more likable at that rate but you know I really really enjoyed this book I gave it a five out of five stars on Goodreads I don't usually give books five stars like I don't not everything I read is gonna get a four or five star so that means a lot if I say this book is a five-star book. I really enjoyed it, and I would even recommend if you do read this book, go check out The Afterword by Stephen King. Um, he talks about his process. I guess he originally had started writing this book back in 1972, I do believe. Don't quote me on that, because I may be wrong about the year. But he said he found it hard to really find enough research at that time to make a decent story out of it. So he shelved the idea and the manuscript for later. And he said he was glad he did because he found, he came upon more research material. And this guy really researched it. Like he even looked at maps of Dallas and even went and visited the location where Lee Harvey Oswald had lived with his family in Dallas. That takes a lot of effort, man. And I appreciate that because an author is writing it as it really was, and I found that to be really cool. Um, I really appreciate that an author will go to those lengths to do their own investigation and their own research to, to create that real feeling for a story. Um, he also let his wife Tabitha read it, which I guess she's his number one critic, he said. I've never read anything by her. I'm willing to check out her books because I've had a couple people recommend her books to me and his son Joe Hill um, suggested changing the ending and I'm kind of glad and so is Stephen King that Joe Hill changed that ending because that ending was so beautiful it was so touching I wanted to cry so bad <laughs> it was it was a beautiful ending Mr. King beautiful ending but yeah I cannot gush about this book enough and to be honest with you I I did see the Hulu uh, series that was that was created based on the book before this, and I kind of I kept visualize. I think that guy was James Franco who played George Amberson in the series, and I kept picturing him while I was reading the book. And like I'll admit, I, I couldn't help but picture him because I had that I had seen that series before reading it. But yeah, um, I think I'm going to go check out the Hulu series again because it's been a while since I've seen it. I know that the book is slightly different. I think that there were slight differences with the strings. And that was another thing that I found cool was that King talked about string theory and quantum physics and how like there are not... It's not the same timeline, but when you change something, 
it creates another string, like another bubble universe, another alternate world. And I found that interesting. Like, he kind of dumbed it down enough so, like, you don't have to know about physics and stuff to understand what he's talking about. But I did appreciate that, too, and I really liked that part as well. Um, I'm kind of glad that my buddy recommended this book to me a long time ago. And I don't know why I waited so long to read it, but it is a very, very good read. Um, of course, as always, I will have a link for Amazon down below for those of you in the U.S., um, I get a very small percentage of every sale through that link. You can pick up this book or any other book through that link. It helps out my channel. Along with that, I have a book depository link. They offer free worldwide shipping to the rest of the world. They offer the same great discounts as Amazon. And like I said, I appreciate all of y'all that have been buying books through my links. It really helps me out because I'm not getting the AdSense. My channel's slowly growing. I'm at 580 subscribers now. And thank you all for you recent subscribers. Um, if, I, if people didn't hide or make their subscription status is secret, I would do shout outs for everybody that's been following me. Because I really do appreciate you guys following me. That's all I got for you guys. If you came here looking for book reviews, like I said in the beginning, go ahead and hit that subscriber button. Hit that notification bell, which is so important because I don't think I'm going to wait till the weekend to upload this video and I want to make sure you guys are aware that I uploaded it. I'm rambling now, but thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been Dan and I'll be